Okay, so the topic today then is on the odd eccentric personality disorders, of which there are three. First, paranoid personality disorder. So individuals with this disorder are very suspicious of individuals in all situations and with most people. Um, they show a pattern of distrust and suspiciousness such that other people's motives are interpreted as malevolent, even if other people have um, no ulterior motives. And the suspiciousness causes a constant scanning of the environment for evidence to support these suspicions. It affects their emotional adjustment and social relationships. And individuals who have paranoid PD see the problems as originating from other people, not from themselves. And this is different from paranoid schizophrenia or delusional disorder in that paranoid PD does not have these psychotic symptoms and it tends to be much less disabling. So we have schizotypal personality disorder. Um, so I want you to pause this, read this description here, and then we'll talk about the diagnostic criteria. So schizotypal PD. So in this personality disorder, we have a pattern of acute discomfort in close relationships. There are also cognitive or perceptual distortions and very eccentric behavior. But the behavior is not odd enough to qualify for a diagnosis of schizophrenia. So sometimes we see um, the presence of this magical thinking here, like if I think hard enough, I can make the wind blow. They have very, very few friends, if any, because they're very strange interpersonally. And they don't become comfortable with a person, even over repeated social interactions. And the discomfort is motivated by paranoia, um, not by concerns like social phobia, which are you know concerns about being judged by other people. These paranoid concerns that individuals with schizotypal PD experience don't abate. They don't lessen even after they have interacted with an individual over multiple periods of time. Their speech might be kind of hard to follow, so similar to schizophrenia, they might use loose associations, so that is tangentially related topics, or it might be kind of incoherent. Um, oftentimes these individuals are physically unkempt, so they, they look disheveled. Oftentimes they talk to themselves, they're anxious around others, especially when three or more people are present. And they often have a history of being teased, especially in childhood, and participating in groups that are kind of on the fringe um, or on the, on the outskirts of other social groups. Eventually, this particular personality disorder might develop into schizophrenia, and you can probably see that there are many parallels here. Um, particular treatment for this disorder, we have these individuals engage in social skills training. So their odd um, personal mannerisms, interacting with other people, kind of push other people away. They're very difficult to be around, and so we want to teach these individuals more effective ways of interacting in the social environment. Okay, so schizoid PD, um, here is a case study, so I want you to pause this, read this, and then we'll relate it to diagnostic criteria. Okay, so schizoid personality disorder is a pattern of detachment from social relationships and a restricted range of emotional expression. So they really have zero interest in forming social relationships. The defining characteristic um, is that they have this severely restricted range of emotion with the social detachment. They appear to have little or no interest in relationships. They don't appear to experience ordinary emotions like pleasure or warmth and they appear to take pleasure in solitary activities. So on the outside, they might appear to be very self-absorbed, but in reality, they really just want to be by themselves. They prefer working by themselves on things. Um, they don't show the typical patterns of thought, behavior, or speech that are associated with schizophrenia. So for treatment then, we might have these individuals become gradually exposed to social activity. So maybe starting a social activity where they interact with one person initially and then upping the ante where 
They then start to interact with more than one person at a time in some kind of social activity. Or group therapy is a great place to get these individuals to be able to exercise social skills um, and essentially forcing them to interact with other people as opposed to preferring these solitary activities.